Um, moving on, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about immersion. Um, are there some slang terms that helps me express myself more in an American manner? You know, slang meaning, you know, maybe more, a little bit more urban terms that uh, uh, are found more here in the U.S. versus, let's say, uh, you know, in yeah. the U.K. Very much so. And that oftentimes it's the, uh, it's the, we call those idioms and colloquialisms, basically. Um, it's those that, that separate uh, cultures, basically. It's those things. Like, I don't know why, but the English have a reputation for being much more proper than we do. I don't know if that's true, because they call a stove a cooker. It drives me crazy. I don't know why. They just, it drives me crazy when the British call a stove or an oven a cooker. I'm like, is that the best you can come up with? Oh, turn on the cooker. Turn on the cooker, mate. Gonna have some kippers. So it's, it's one of those things where it's the idioms, the slang, the ultra casual phrasing. That is what makes a society distinct in many ways. So the American way of uh, idioms, we, we do have, we do have our, our own. So let's just, let me give you a, an example. Um, an idiom is best defined as local jargon, local phrasing that we all understand, but perhaps an outsider to our culture might not fully understand. So if I said, um, um, trying to phrase this properly, I'm on thin ice at work. Okay, now you and I both know what that means. That means I'm at risk. Uh, perhaps I'm in trouble at work. Perhaps I'm in danger of losing my job. I'm not literally walking on thin ice. So that's an idiom. You know, we actually, that, that's a really, that's a really fruitful idiom. I'm walking on eggshells. I'm not literally walking on eggshells. I'm being careful. I'm, I'm watching myself. Uh, my back is against the wall, meaning I have no options. I'm stuck. There's not much I can do. Another similar one to that is, uh, let's say, I've painted myself into a corner. Okay, now these are all idioms, right? So these are local phrasing we get. They're usually, not 100% of the time, but they're usually metaphors. Now a metaphor is a comparison that's not a simile. Simile is like or as. You're pretty as a picture. Oh, it's hot like a furnace in here. Those are similes. A metaphor, no like or as. Um, oh, I'm a ticking time bomb that kind of thing. So most idioms are metaphors. Um, now, if I said, if I said, uh, hey, that's a cool jacket. You know what I mean? I mean, that's awesome. It looks great. Somebody from outside our culture might hear that and say, it's a cool jacket. Well, it's not working. We have to get you a warm one, that sort of thing. So these are idioms and there are thousands thousands of them in our language. We encounter them every day. When I'm teaching our classes, I, I do all manner of reading passages. We look at poetry, we look at song lyrics, we look at movie scripts, we look at proper speeches, we look at novel excerpts. These are full of idioms, okay? So idiom is the standard metaphor that we use to communicate ideas and feelings. The other aspect of that, now colloquialisms, um, <laughs> It's an even fancier term for an even more casual sort of thing. Um, yeah. Nope. Uh-huh. Uh-uh. Uh, I'm not gonna. And then that's where we get all this other stuff here. Th these things. Um, Right? Like if I, this is not proper English by any means, but we all understand it. We've had to adapt to the expansion of our language. And sometimes the expansion goes into ultra casual, ultra informal ways. So this here, like this looks terrible. But if I texted that to you, you'd know exactly what I mean. See you tonight. 
So part of the, uh, the, the colloquialism thing is that you're not gonna, you're not gonna find it in proper uh, academic or business writing. You're gonna find it in scripts, you're gonna find it in novels, you might even find it in advertising, um, but you're not going to find it in any sort of official documentation, so you won't see it there. But you, you, we talk it, we text it. Um, the, you know, things like uh, ain't, that sort of thing. These are extremely, extremely common. One other thing that I would add to that, now this is more of a spelling term, but it applies in the same idea, which is the, the contractions. Now, we use contractions more often than we don't. By that, I mean, um, if, I, if I said, I could not sleep last night and I did not wake up on time, so I will not be at work today. Now, if I said that, it sounds fake. It doesn't sound natural. Oh, I could not sleep last night and I did not wake up on time, so I will not be at work today. It sounds like I'm lying. Like it doesn't sound natural at all. But if I said, I couldn't sleep last night and I didn't wake up on time, so I won't be at work today. That is much more natural. One thing I find when my students are helping me with the reading passages is they won't, they'll ignore the contraction. Like, uh, I'm going to the store. Many of my students say, I am going to the store. And I have to correct them. I say, whoa, if it says the contraction, I'm, say I'm. You don't have to say I am. If it says I'll, say I'll. You don't have to say I will. Couldn't, shouldn't wouldn't, didn't, don't, won't. If that's how it's written, that's how you read it. Because when you officialize it, when you put it in the proper English terms, it doesn't sound natural. I couldn't sleep last night, I didn't wake up on time. If you read it as, I could not sleep last night and I did not wake up on time, it doesn't sound like American English, it just sounds really unnatural. So those are the three main points that I would use to address your question about casual, local, uh, informal phrasing. We've got the idiom, we've got the colloquialism, and we've got the contraction. You adopt all three of those, you become accustomed to those three things, and you'll find that your accent is becoming more Americanized. I promise you that. So there you go. Yeah, that's, that's actually really cool.